What is happening, YouTube? My name is Matt Faircloth. My company is called the DeRosa Group, and we're a real estate company dedicated to transforming lives through real estate. A self-directed IRA is an investment vehicle that almost every American has access to, but they don't realize it. And that's, that's a great vehicle to allow working folks to build up their retirement accounts. So when they retire, they've got a nice nest egg. Here's why the IRA is under attack right now. It's not just for the wealthy. It's for middle America to use as well for anybody to use. The IRA is under attack and it's something that we need to take seriously. It's going to force investors only into Wall Street. Hey guys, I'm going to go deep dive about IRAs in a second here. And if you guys want to hear about what you can do to help to stop the IRA from being under attack and offering real alternative investments to people, watch this video to the very end because I tell you guys what you can do to take action about this if you choose to. Now back to the video. Now, that's an interesting mantra that we have there. And one of the lives that we transform in DeRosa Group is the lives of our investors. And that's what today's video is about vehicles that some of our investors use to invest passively in real estate investments. Let's hop in. If you guys like what we do here on this channel, like this video and click that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below to tell us what you think of this video. One of the vehicles that people use is a self-directed IRA to invest in real estate. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about what a self-directed IRA is, why it's an important vehicle to use for investing, and how it is under attack right now and what we can do about it. A self-directed IRA is an investment vehicle that almost every American has access to, but they don't realize it. Let's say that Joe Smith or Jane Smith has a W-2 job. Well, what's one of the benefits that they get from their employer. They get healthcare benefits, perhaps salary, they get paid time off. And maybe one of the other things they get is a retirement account. And when you're working for a company, the retirement account you get is called a 401k. A 401k is a phenomenal vehicle. And it's something that you can put part of your pre-tax salary into, meaning like you, know, you earn X amount of dollars, you take some of your money before you pay tax on it and toss it into that 401k account. And if you've got a really good company, like most companies are, they'll do a company match where if you put in a dollar, maybe they'll put in a dollar too, whatever it is. That's a great vehicle to allow working folks to build up their retirement accounts. So when they retire, they've got a nice nest egg that they can produce cash flow from, from and live off of and everything like that. Now it's not tax-free forever. You do pay tax on it when you start taking the money out, but it's, ta it's called a tax deferred vehicle. The 401k is, and that means you don't pay tax when it goes in you pay tax when it comes out. Now, let's say Joe or Jane Smith leave that job that has that 401k. They leave that job. They go to work for another company that that 401k account at the new company can be transferred into an IRA because 401k is for existing employees. IRA is, an is also a retirement account a vehicle, but that's for prior employees that used to work at one company. Now, hopefully Joe and, Joe and Jane Smith now work at another company, but the retirement account that they have stayed with this prior company and can now get and is now an IRA. The IRA continues to grow. They can, can it continues to be invested in whatever it is they were invested with when they were a 401k. They can, you know, throw more money at it or they maybe have a 401k with their new company and they kind of forget about it. IRAs are the kind of the forgotten vehicle that a lot of people just forget. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do have that thing that's with Vanguard or with Fidelity or whatever it is that it's with. Yeah, it does have some money sitting over there. The reason why it's such an untapped vehicle, and I talk about this a lot. In, uh, in raising private capital in this book that you guys should all check out. It's uh, about how to raise money out of your own network. That if you've got people that are looking to invest with you in your deals, they may forget that they have this retirement account that's with their prior employer. And that IRA account can currently be invested in real estate or in any other kind of vehicle. You can buy bars of gold with your IRA. You can buy individual stocks, which is very hard to do with a 401k. IRAs have less regulations on them than 401ks do. And so IRAs are allowed to be invested in all kinds of cool stuff, such as real estate. You can buy real estate directly. You can buy, you can buy a house in your IRA account. You can do a private loan. Many, many people do those. Or you can invest in syndications, which are called private placements with your IRA. You can invest in oil and gas, not just real estate syndications, all kinds of different syndications. You can buy crypto with your IRA. Why IRAs are important, a important place, important reason for people to invest is that they are still tax deferred. As I said, with a 401k, when the money goes in, you don't pay tax till you pull it out. Now, that's a great vehicle that we've given to middle America, like the majority of middle America. That's where a lot of their wealth is. This is not a vehicle only for the wealthy. And I will also say that a lot of the, a lot of the wealthy don't have access to these things because they either own their own business and they use something else called a solo 401k. And they may use other vehicles that are out there, but 
a lot of middle America, people earning between 50K and 200K, let's say, are less than what the government calls wealthy. Our current government's calling wealthy somebody earning over $400,000 a year. So let's just say anybody less than that number, a lot of their wealth is in their home and it's also in an IRA account or in their retirement account. It's really great because it allows a lot of people to have access to capital to put into alternative investments. And yes, Wall Street. I'm not here to poo-poo Wall Street. Uh, think what you will about Wall Street. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to explain IRAs to you guys about why I love them. And I think that they're a great vehicle to invest in all kinds of other assets and in locking them with through rolling your IRA to a self-directed IRA custodian, which charge very little fees. They're great companies. There's many, many out there. You guys can just Google self-directed IRA custodians. And there's a bajillion of them that can help you move the account from Vanguard or Fidelity or whatever it is that they're with, or even a portion there of your IRA account over to a self-directed account. And then you can invest in all kinds of cool stuff like syndications and private placements and bars of gold and crypto and all that fun stuff. They're tax deferred. That's why I like them because you can grow your wealth, football it down the road, and then cash in your chips at some point when you retire. And also that you can uh, recycle the cash. So as you maybe invest in a syndication that has a big windfall, the apartment building or the self-storage center you're invested in sells, big windfall comes in, a cash investor now has a tax problem. An IRA investor does not. The IRA investor doesn't pay tax on the gain until the asset sells in the long, long future. Now, there's all kinds of complex stuff you can talk about, like uh, UBIT, um, un unrelated business income tax, and all kinds of other stuff. We're not going to get into that. Those are things that if you're going to do more complicated IRA investments, that they can show up. You should talk to your tax advisor about that. But for the most part, currently, IRAs are a tax deferred via very hard to pierce that veil and come through and tax you personally through gains your IRA has currently. That's what IRAs are. That's why I think that they're amazing. And I think that just they give middle America, not the, not the rich a little bit, but mostly middle America access to capital to invest in all kinds of cool things, not just mutual funds. So here's why the IRA is under attack right now. The IRA is under attack because the, the Biden administration has a tax bill that's out there through the Ways and Means Department. And what the Ways and Means Department does is say Ways and Means determines how the government's going to get money to pay for its agenda. Now, Biden has created a $3.5 trillion budget, which is an enormous budget with lots of infrastructure investments and lots of great stuff that he wants to do with the money, but he also needs to get money to make those investments with money. Now, I'm not making any political statements here. I'm not talking about political alignments, but what this does do, it strikes at the core of what I find very, very dear and, and I think is a major part of transforming lives through real estate, which is what our company's mantra is, is it allows access to investments for all people. It allows middle America, upper America, all people to invest in things outside of Wall Street, like apartment buildings. And because the IRA is under attack, it could make it less beneficial for all people to invest in things like real estate using their retirement account. The Ways and Means bill pretty much says that if you invest in these types of things that have stipulations like syndications and private placements do require that either uh, you are an accredited investor or a non-accredited investor, it's an income check. If you're an accredited investor, you have to earn over 200000 a year, 300000 if you're married, or you have to have a net worth of over a million, one of those three things. And you can Google accredited investor if you want to read, read up more about that. Some private placements require that they're accredited only. And some, like, like a lot of the ones that we do, allow for non-accredited and accredited investors to come in. That's called an income requirement for investing within the, in, the, uh, in the investment in the private placement. If you have an income requirement, and not just for the wealthy, but if you have an income requirement at all for non-accredited as well, their retirement account then becomes taxable for anything that's invested in those private placements. That right there is something that really takes away a lot of the benefit that the government has created many, many years ago in allowing for tax deferred wealth growth uh, through IRA accounts. Again, it is not just for the wealthy, it's for middle America to use as well, or anybody to use to build their wealth through tax deferred investments and allows you to take advantage of great things like compounding interest and all that stuff. Now, the IRA is under attack and it's something that we need to take seriously because it is something that will affect our industry, the real estate industry, and it's something that will affect just America's ability to build its wealth. The government's going to get its pound of flesh in taxes when the IRA account becomes uh, taxable when the person's of retirement age. It's, uh, it's something that's been happening that we've been allowing these folks to build their funds over time. It's also not fair that the government's talking about not taxing dollars that were grown through re typical retirement vehicles like stocks and mutual funds and those kinds of things. Those things are not under attack. The IRA itself, they're not looking to tax the IRA growth altogether. They're only looking to tax the private placement investments, which is 
a completely unfair to look, way to look at things because what that's going to do, it's going to force investors only into Wall Street, only one investment vehicle. And I'm not poo-pooing Wall Street. It's just there should be true investment diversity. True investment diversity means investing in all kinds of different asset classes uh, and things like not. And it's not just investing in Microsoft and Google. That's not diversity. If you're investing just in stocks or just in mutual funds or just in something that's publicly traded like that, then you are not diversified. I believe in real diversity, some stocks, some crypto, some real estate across the board. And IRAs allow you currently to do those things. If you want to speak up about this, you're more than welcome to reach out to your congressman and your senator. But the bottom line is, I believe currently, this is what, you know, I'll, I'll preface it with, this is what Matt thinks. Matt believes that this bill will likely not go through the way that it's written, that it was kind of slapped together and that they're going to take out the comments about IRAs and about taxing these types of retirement accounts unfairly, meaning like only for private placements is when the dollars become taxable. I believe it's going to change and that's going to come out. If it does pass, currently the way that it's written, Written, they allow a two-year grace period. So if you do have IRA investments, or if you are a syndicator with IRA investments with you, or if you're thinking about putting your IRA into a vehicle, you've got a two-year window that that growth is still not taxable. And after two years, it becomes taxable again. So you get two years to talk to your syndicator, to your private placement operator that you're working with or whatever it is, talk to your financial planner about moving those dollars around in that so that you can avoid the tax that could unfairly tax your retirement account on private placements, but not on other things. So that's the two, that's my two cents. That's why the IRA is under attack. And that's why we need to monitor these things in our industry and take a stand for people that want to build their wealth through things that are outside of Wall Street and transform lives through real estate and do all the cool stuff like we do here at the DeRosa Group. Feel free to leave your comments below. I know it's a little bit of a touchy subject. I'd be happy to hear your comments. Love to hear what you guys have to say. If you guys have questions you want me to answer here on the YouTube channel, send me a line to help me at derosagroup.com. That is help me at derosagroup.com. And I'll answer the questions right here on the YouTube channel for you and everyone else. Thank you for watching guys. I'm grateful for you. Have a great and profitable week.